Next, so we're gonna look at how neurons can control muscles and how your brain can signal the skeletal muscles to contract and you know move uh, the body. But first, we need to look at the structure of a neuron because this is related to how neurons can control muscles. When you look at this diagram, this kind of shows you the kind of basic structures of a neuron. This is the cell body. And on the cell body, you will see kind of those kind of branch, like tree branch-like structures. Those are called dendrites, dendrites. So neurons use dendrites to receive signals from other neurons. And the next structure, which is very important when you talk about muscle control, this structure is called axon. So the axon is kind of like a big tail right, of the neuron, so axon. Um, sometimes neurons can have a very long axons, right? So that they can control muscles that are kind of far away from the brain. So these neurons are specialized cells to transmit messages. And those messages are in the form of nerve impulses. And I need to add that these nerve impulses, these are electrical impulses, electrical impulses. However, however, when the, signal when the signal transmits to between two neurons, so let's say there's neuron one and the neuron two, when the signal gets to between two neurons, it will become a chemical signal because the electrical signal can only uh, be transmitted within each neuron cell. So in between them, that's uh, a watery environment, right? That's a fluid. So electrical signal cannot um, go through it. So the electrical signal will be kind of translated to a chemical signal. And once the chemical signal gets to the second neuron, then it will be converted to electrical signal again. All right. Now we talk about the uh, major regions of the neuron, and you can see, uh, you can get more details from the text. Another thing I want to mention real quick is when you look at these axons, you probably notice that there's some of these kind of blue structures, right? Those are called myelin sheath right here. So myelin sheath is a kind of fatty material that covers the axons. Now myelin sheath is very important because of the, the fatty kind of material nature. It serves as a really good insulation. So remember there's electrical signal, right? Electrical impulse travel down each neuron. So you want to uh, insulate the axon to keep the electrical signal travel down in this direction, right? Travel down the axon and it doesn't get to transmit it to other parts. So that's what myelin is for. It insulates the axons and keep the electrical signal travel the uh, correct direction. It can also speed up nerve impulse transmission uh, because there are nodes of uh, Ranvier over here, which allows the signal to kind of jump, right? So it transmits much faster. Now, this diagram shows you two components. First one is a motor neuron. Motor neuron controls skeletal muscles. And oftentimes each motor neuron can control multiple muscle fibers. So you can see this is one muscle fiber, this is another, another muscle fiber. So you can see for this motor neuron, it controls three muscle fibers. It probably can control more, but uh, it's not shown on, the, on this diagram. So this neuron, this motor neuron's axon, it travels down the body. And once it gets close to the muscle fibers, it's going to kind of branch off to form these axon terminals. And each terminal will get to each muscle fiber and control muscle fiber. Next, I'm gonna look at the, the microscopic process happening at the axon terminal and the muscle. Now you can see over here, these are the axon terminals, right? And then there's this muscle fiber right there. And within each muscle fiber, you can see all these uh, myofibrils. Now, in this diagram, it looks like the axon terminals are touching the muscle, 
but they're actually not. So you can see in this diagram, there is a little gap right here, right, between the axon terminal and the cell membrane of the muscle fiber. So there's a little gap right there. So this whole structure is called a synapse. The synapse is, again, the structure that allows the neurons to pass signals to other neurons or muscle fibers or glands. Okay, so this whole structure is a synapse right there. Um, in this case, this motor neuron that controls muscle contraction, this is the presynaptic cell. And the muscle that's controlled by the presynaptic neuron, this is called the postsynaptic cell. Okay, now the presynaptic cell is going to transmit signals, right, and regulate or control the postsynaptic cell. And in this case, motor neuron controlling the muscle contraction. Okay, now the electrical signal is going to get down here to the axon terminal, right, when, you're, when you consciously generate the, the thought to control, to move the, your fingers, right, the signal will travel down from your brain to the axon terminal of the motor neurons that control the muscles in your fingers. Once the uh, electrical signal travels down to the axon terminal, it's going to be converted to chemical signal. I said earlier, because of the gap here, which is um, filled with a fluid, right? Because our cells are in this kind of watery fluid environment, electrical signal cannot get, cannot get through. So uh, we need to convert the electrical signal to chemical signal. So the electrical signal travels down here is going to trigger the release of neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are chemicals that neurons use to communicate with other neurons or control muscles or glands. So in this case, when the motor neurons control muscle contraction, the neurotransmitter that's used is called acetylcholine, acetylcholine. Uh, which is, you can find the full name down here. And the short for acetylcholine is ACH. So the electro, electrical impulse is going to trigger the release of acetylcholine, which you can see these purple dots. So these acetylcholine molecules will be released from the motor neuron, and they're going to diffuse, right? They're going to diffuse through this gap synaptic gap, and eventually they're going to bind to the receptors on the cell membrane of the muscle fiber. And the binding is going to trigger some changes and it's going to generate electrical signal. So you can see now the chemical signal is translated back to electrical impulses, right? So over here, it's electrical impulse, and then when it gets to the synapse, it's uh, converted to chemical signal, right? And then the chemical messengers, which are neurotransmitters, are going to bind to the surface receptors on the muscle cells. And that binding is going to lead to a change, lead to a translation of the chemical messenger back to electrical impulse. And once the muscle receives the electrical impulse, the muscle is going to contract. So this is how your brain can consciously control the muscle contraction right, and generate movement. Uh, I hope I explained this well. This is a kind of complicated process. Usually you need to kind of read the text a few times or watch videos to understand. So if you still have any questions, just let me know. Okay, now let's look at some uh, practice problems. Number one. Which of the following occurs to skeletal muscle as a result of acetylcholine released at the neuromuscular junction? So acetylcholine is the chemical substance, chemical molecule that the motor neurons release to tell the skeletal muscles to contract. Right? So once the skeletal muscle cells receive acetylcholine, they are going to contract. The correct answer is C. 
Number two, skeletal muscle contraction is stimulated by the neurotransmitter. The name is acetylcholine, right? A, A, C, H. Number three, which of the following results from the release of neurotransmitter dopamine into the nervous synapse? Now, you may not know what exactly dopamine does, but you can use your knowledge to kind of go through A, B, C, D and eliminate the answers that are obviously not right. Now, let's go back to the question and you need to identify which event will lead to the release of a neurotransmitter. Remember, we said we have to have electrical signal that travels to the axon terminal, right? And then this will be translated to chemical signal. So the condition to, re to release a neurotransmitter, whether it's acetylcholine or it's dopamine, has to be the electrical signal or the firing of the presynaptic cell, which is right here. So when you look at A, that's exactly what happens, right? The presynaptic neuron fires an action potential. And once this action potential gets to the axon terminal, and this will trigger the release of this particular chemical messenger. So the correct answer is A. Now let's look at B. Dopamine binds to receptor proteins on the membrane of the postsynaptic cell. That's correct. But this happens after the transmitter is, is released and diffuses to the postsynaptic cell, right? This happens after the release, after the release of dopamine, right? So it cannot cause the release of dopamine because it happens after dopamine is released. So you need to kind of be familiar with the sequence of a different event happening when two neurons interact or one neuron controls a muscle cell. Okay. C, dopamine enters the cytoplasm of the postsynaptic post cell. Now this statement is actually not correct. When you go back to the diagram, you see these neurotransmitters, once they diffuse across the synaptic cleft, the gap here, they only bind to the receptors in the cell surface, right? You can see these receptors are embedded in the cell membrane, which is on the cell surface. These neurotransmitters only bind to the receptors. They do not enter the cell, no. They cannot enter the cell because the membrane prevents these neurotransmitters from entering the cell. So that's why there are receptors on the cell surface that can receive these neurotransmitters because these neurotransmitters cannot enter the cell and um, exert infects. They cannot do that. Okay, last one. Dopamine causes the postsynaptic nerve cells to contract. Now, at first you think, oh, that's correct, right? The, the statement itself is correct. Um, dopamine causes the some kind of effect, right, on the postsynaptic nerve cell. But then you can see over here, contract. No, the nerve cells do not contract. You can change this to fire or generate electrical impulses. Only muscle cells can contract. So the wording is not really correct. And also, this is not a, an event that happens before the release of neurotransmitter, right? So all these B, C, D, these are events that happen after the release of neurotransmitter. So they cannot, you know, cause the release of dopamine. So even though you may not be familiar with what dopamine is, as long as you are familiar with the process, you can kind of eliminate the wrong answers. All right, guys, you have completed the neuromuscular system. Um, good job, guys. Uh, we'll have more lessons coming up, so um, stay tuned.